All right, we have one last video for this section where we want to compute the volume of a sphere using this slicing method that we have. So we're asked to find the, vol uh, the formula for the volume of a sphere with radius r, and I want to start by relabeling that little r as a big R. I'm going to want to use a little r uh, during the course of the problem, and so it will be easiest if instead we call the fixed radius of the sphere r, and we're going to use little r as the variable radius for some circles that we're going to be drawing. So let's use this process that we just came up with in order to find the, the, volume, find the formula for this volume. So step A uh, is asking us to place the solid on the x-axis. Great. So we have some choice in how to do this. When we were doing the square pyramid, we put the point of the pyramid at the origin. And we want to, again, take advantage of the fact that the origin is kind of a nice point. It has coordinates 0, 0. And here, instead of maybe placing uh, one of the edges of the sphere at the origin, we're going to place the center of the sphere at the origin. So in terms of the actual picture, Here's my x-axis, here's my y-axis. If I want to draw a sphere centered at the origin, uh, let's think about maybe what that would look like. We have uh, some sphere here, it's, it's centered at the origin, great. Uh, what we want to do now is Let's see, part B is asking or is, is saying that we should find a formula for the area of a cross section formed by intersecting the solid with a plane perpendicular to the x-axis. All right, so we want to first think about what does a plane perpendicular to the x-axis look like, and we know that that plane should uh, be parallel rather to this yz plane that we have going on, where this z-axis is perpendicular to both x and y. and so if we were to draw that plane, pick pick some plane here, uh, we have some plane here, and it's going to intersect the circle in some way. So how is it going to intersect, or intersect the sphere in some way? How is it going to intersect the sphere? Well, it's going to create a little circle here. So here is the... Uh, shape itself. It's some kind of circle that uh, I'm doing. And as I'm translating this plane that I've drawn here to the left and right so that it kind of uh, ranges across the this sphere, uh, we want to think about what the area of the cross section is. In other words, what's the area of this of this circle that I've created um, by intersecting this plane with the sphere? So in order to think about uh, that area, it's probably helpful to think about this picture in terms of two dimensions again. So what exactly is the picture that I have here? And so when I uh, look at just the xy plane, and I intersect the sphere with the xy plane, I get some circle. Here's my circle. And there's maybe the question of what is the radius of this circle? Well, the radius of this circle is the same as the radius of the sphere. It's r. Now, when I take my plane and I intersect it with the x, uh, or when I take, yeah, when I take my yz plane here, the green plane that I've drawn, and I intersect it with the xy plane, I get some vertical line. And in fact, the line that I've drawn looks something like this. Now this line here corresponds to the green circle that I've drawn that is the intersection between the plane and the sphere itself. So if I want to find the area of this circle, it might be most helpful to find the radius of the circle. But the radius of the circle is exactly the top half of this green line in the xy plane here. So I want to find how long is this is half of this green line here. And if I think, I know that the, that the length there depends on the x value that I'm at. So if I pick uh, some, some x value here, I want to think about, well, what exactly is uh, the height of this green line? 
because I know that's going to be the radius of my sphere. This is the thing that I'm going to call little r, which ranges from the x-axis here to the blue circle. So the area of the green circle in my three-dimensional picture here should be pi r squared. So this is the cross-sectional area that we're looking for. Now the question is, how does r depend on x? How does r change as x changes? And I notice that r is simply the y-coordinate on the circle at this point here. So if I think about uh, what exactly the, the formula for this circle is, I know that it has the form x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Since I'm looking for the y-coordinate, I might go about solving for y. So uh, this would look like y equals, and I know it's going to be the plus or minus square root. I want to take the positive square root here uh, because I'm looking at some point on the upper half of the circle. So this is going to be y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. Since r is the, uh, little r rather, is the y coordinate, I know that I have now a formula for r in terms of x. So going back to uh, my formula for the cross-sectional area here, I have that uh, a is equal to pi times the little r squared. Little r is root r squared minus x squared. And so I can write this as pi times r squared minus x squared. Oh, pi, not x. Cool. So I now have a formula for the area of one of my cross sections, depending on which x value I pick. So this is a nice, a nice kind of uh, place to be. And what do I need to do with this? Well, now that I have found a formula for my area, I want to integrate the cross sectional area using the appropriate bounds on the integral. So what I'm looking for here is the volume of my sphere is the integral of this pi times r squared minus x squared dx. And I want to think about what the bounds on x are. Well, I know x should range from the left end of the sphere to the right end of the sphere. And the left end of the sphere, since the sphere has radius big R, has uh, x coordinate equal to minus big R. Likewise, the right end of the sphere has x coordinate positive r. So I now have a uh, integral representing my volume. Notice that here I have the I have only constants pi, big R, and I have a variable x. If I had a little r in my formula, that would be a problem because little r depends on x. It's some variable, but it isn't x itself. I'm only allowed to integrate things that have one variable in them, and that's x in this case. Cool. So let's see. So I have this integral, and well, this is this is something that I can actually do. Uh, I know that pi is a constant, so it sticks around when uh, finding an antiderivative. The antiderivative of r squared is r squared times x. The antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. And I'm going to evaluate from x equals minus r to x equals plus r. So let's see, so I have here, uh, if I want to evaluate x at r, I'm gonna have pi times, uh, let's see, r squared times x is r cubed minus r cubed over three. And now I want to subtract pi times uh, this thing evaluated at minus r. So r, so in that case, I'm going to get a minus r cubed and I'm going to get a plus r cubed over 3. Let's see. So this first term here is going to give me r cubed minus r cubed over 3 is a 2r cubed over 3. Uh, the second term here, I have uh, minus r cubed uh, plus r cubed over 3 gives me a minus 2r cubed over 3. I have a double negative here, minus a minus, so that contributes to a plus, so I'm adding these two terms, and that is going to give me 4 pi r cubed over 3. 
If you recall, this is exactly the formula that we've had for the volume of a sphere from one of our homework problems earlier. It's uh, kind of the, the classic formula for the volume of a sphere. So here you can see how we're using calculus to come up with a lot of these volumes. And this is a really nice approach. Um, later on in this section and in the next section and throughout this chapter, we're going to be talking about specific cases of this approach to computing volumes by slicing. So this is a, a nice general method. You'll have a chance to practice it as well with a couple more cone-like objects on your, um, on your homework.